Right, we just finished talking about non-infectious diseases and now we'll talk about some infectious diseases. Uh, a little warning, some of these have gross pictures. They're not too bad, but just in case you're a bit squeamish. Okay, let's talk about bacterial infectious diseases. Now, bacteria we know are microscopic. They invade the body and they damage cells with toxins or enzymes, right? They can be treatable with antibiotics, though we know that some of the antibiotics are becoming uh, not strong enough for some of the amazing bacterial changes. So they're becoming quite resistant to our antibiotics. Symptoms of these kinds of diseases vary greatly, right? They are uncommon in plants, however, uh, because the plant sap is generally too acidic. So really, the animals take most of the brunt of these bacterial diseases. We are talking things like acne. We are talking things like pneumonia. We are talking things like tetanus, which is one of those non-contagious ones, which causes rigors in the body and all the stiffening up. Um, gangrene, which is basically skin is rotting off in, in a sense, and botulism, which can occur due to spoiled canned food that's been sitting around for too long. It's super gross. All right, viral diseases are caused by viruses, we know, and viruses are sub-microscopic. They can only be viewed with an electron microscope. They invade host cells and they use them to actually reproduce more virus. So the host cell eventually just bursts out, releases heaps of virus, uh, virus particles so they can go and infect more cells. Now, generally, uh, these are species specific, though we know that they can mutate and then jump species, which isn't pleasant. Uh, and these are not treatable with antibiotics. So unfortunately, you know, sometimes we do get prescribed antibiotics for having a virus it makes no sense uh, symptoms really do vary and viruses occur in plants animals fungi protists and bacteria because they are all um, much bigger than virus particles so we are talking things like measles we are talking things like cold sores and herpes and a variety of herpes we are talking things like influenza that's a pretty tripped out picture of a um, uh, influenza virus particle, I guess. We're talking things like HIV, which then leads on to AIDS. We're talking things like glandular fever, which is very unpleasant and makes your, your lymph nodes swell quite heavily. And we are talking things like smallpox. All right, fungal infections. Again, these are microscopic and we know that some uh, fungi actually live in the mouth, the vagina, the digestive system at all times without causing any harm. But when these things become unbalanced, that's when they can actually take over in, as an opportunistic infection. Most of these fungal infections are involved with the surface or the skin uh, and most are treated with fungicides. Uh, so they occur in both animals and plants. You do get trees with certain fungal infections. And um, we're talking things like tinea between your toes, we're talking things like ringworm, which is again a skin disease. We're talking things like thrush. Um, nail rot and jock rot. Very unpleasant. All right, parasites are organisms that depend on their hosts for both food and shelter. We sort of have an understanding of that. They're generally found inside and outside the body um, and their symptoms and target organ vary hugely. We're talking about malaria, which live right inside red blood cells. They then also can reproduce inside your liver as well. Now, protozoa are microscopic single-celled organisms and they exist inside the body and they can be found in tropical regions and be passed on via a vector. Uh, generally, these are worms, right? We see a lot of worms. Obviously, these ones in here um, at the top here are in between your red blood cells. However, we can find them within muscle tissue. You can find them swimming around pond water. Um, but we're also considering things like ticks and fleas and all those kinds of things. So a reminder, really what we are trying to do here, here is identify the difference between infectious and non-infectious diseases. We're talking just a small dot point, but there is a lot to consider in here. Okay.